This wooden box here is a telephone case. The old sort that you have on the wall. And I've also got its parts, not just an empty box. See, you've got the earpiece thing. I've got yeah, all the parts here. As you can see, uh, yeah, it's disassembled. And uh, I don't know exactly how it goes back together, so that's going to be fun. It's a, it's a puzzle, I have no instructions really. I have got these printouts of stuff I found online, and it does, well, it does have its schematic in there, but it's been eaten a bit by something. So, it's not perfect, and yeah, these print, these photos that I printed out are not very good quality, but I think I can figure out the circuit diagram. The question is, can I identify all the components? And now, as you might have noticed, the cabinet, it looks beautiful, because the guy I bought this off, he did a very good job in refinishing it. Beautifully polished. Yeah, it looks really nice. Now, I think I've got all the parts here, and... Yeah, I'll just move this over, but yeah, really beautiful looking thing. And through the magic of buying two of them, we can get an idea of what this one will look like. Although they're not identical at all, actually they're somewhat different. They're both in a box of the same style, except this has a screw at the front to lock, whereas this has a screw on the side. And, and they do, they're different, because this has got, I'll show you, this one, the one, the one that needs to be reassembled has a different uh, mouthpiece. It's a later one, so it must have been updated or something. Because I think this one is, yeah, this one is older than this. Anyway, I, I don't know much about telephones, but yeah, it's a later one because it's all Bakelite as opposed to just this being Bakelite. And I did do a little bit of research in trying to find that. And the biggest difference, of course, is that it's got a dial. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of these telephones, I think in the 60s, got, as automatic exchanges were introduced, because a lot of these were in rural locations, because that's the other weird thing about these. You may notice they're a very big box, and there's a reason they're so big. This big space here was for batteries, because they used local power. So you, you had the, each telephone had batteries in it to power it, and the crank was just to get the, to ring the bell at the exchange. Yeah, because yeah, that, you'd waste the batteries trying to get. I don't. Actually, I don't think the batteries were enough to ring a bell. Anyway, these were local power, so that's why they're so big. And yeah, no dial. You just had to. You just had to ask for the number at the yeah. To, yeah, uh, crank it, which would ring a bell at the exchange, and they ask you what number you want. You tell them. They connect you, and then you have. To, when you finish your call, you turn the crank again, and they hang you up. They yeah, they finish the call. But yeah, anyway, I've, I've gotten sidetracked. I'm supposed to be putting it together, not explaining the history of telephones. <laughs> but, you've, yeah, you've got a dial on this one. This one also has updated electronics on the inside. I haven't actually opened it, but I saw a picture of what it looked like. And yeah, someone's put, it's, it's been given some modern internals, which probably explains why it sounded so good, because I plug this in, it works. Well, the dial doesn't, because uh, they changed the phone lines, and now you can't use rotary dials anymore. But it sounds really good, so... Yeah, of course. The best bit about these is that you can ha you've got the yeah, you, you've got this the, the cradle thingy here with the earpiece, and you can they're, they're beautiful things, and I think you probably get the idea by this point. Also, a beautiful ring. Anyway, I'm supposed to be putting it together, and I've gotten sidetracked yet again. I must be very annoying. But they are beautiful things, and that's why I bought them. Because, of course, the one, the one that I'm fixing, practically, there's not much use. There's not going to be much use for it. Again, it can't dial, and having the dynamo connected or magneto, whatever you want to call it, I think it's yeah, having the the little generator connected to it means you definitely should not connect it to a modern phone line because you'll probably fry something. Anyway, speaking of it, here it is. It's one of the older types because it's massive and it looks beautiful. This one is it's stiff though, so it needs to be cleaned up. Oh, it's turning better. Oh, never mind. Now it seems to work fine. Last time I picked this thing up it was awful, but no, it's fine now. I will probably still clean it though because it, could, it looks like it could do with the clean. But no, that, that turns fine. 
But yeah, so the only use I can think of is maybe as an intercom if I can get a second to crank telephone because again the other one has been modernised and won't work anymore with crank telephones. But yeah, so many parts. It's basically a kit. And I think I'll just go through this and sort them out. You don't need to see all that, right? I, I, I leave so much into my videos that I should just edit it out because it is so boring. I, I think, would I watch my own videos? Uh, no, because I hate hearing my voice. But anyway, this is sort of, this is exactly what I should be cutting out, my incoherent nonsense rambling. So I am going to cut it out. Well, I now have a, this collection of parts on my bench. And very kindly, he provided me with this bottle of gun blue cream, which is for some of the screws. I think some, because you can see the here, I think it gives you this sort of black, blue black finish. And so I probably won't be doing that yet. And I might just see if I can get it all together first and then figure out which ones are supposed to be blue. It'd be only the, only the visible screws would get that treatment. Got an interesting parts, including this rather violent looking thing that got spiked in. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where that went. Presumably in the inside somewhere. I can't really think where else. Uh, that goes around the crank. All sorts of uh, things. <laughs> things. Hmm. Anyway. Oh, I can see you, here. This is the... This here is how you hang up. Because this little... Oh, you know, the cradle or whatever that fits in like that it's quite a strong spring I wonder if it, oh yep that'll 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 pull it down all right that, that, that's got quite a bit of weight to it because it's brass it's just got this sort of turned pattern or something it's more like a cast pattern odd because the other one's all smooth so I wonder what's going on there anyway we'll take that out for now and uh, I've already spotted the first problem. Oh, we know the bells ring. Anyway, <laughs> I just saw the first problem. The the insulation on the wire for this the, the ringer bell is gone. So when this touches, it might yeah, it might short out on something and not ring properly. Fortunately, I have a solution for that. I've got I got some yeah, I've got some red nail polish here, which is totally not mine. Totally not mine. And uh. Uh, I'll paint some of that on there and it might insulate it. Might also just crack off immediately when this gets bent, so we'll see. And I probably should just test all these coils to see well, all these coils, the, the two coils. This is what worries me the most, this big <laughs> wiring loop. It's got labels, but I don't know what B, E and A correspond to. <laughs> I don't know anything about telephones. Hmm, a lot of connectors. At least I won't be doing too much soldering. Ho hopefully I don't have to do any. Although I th uh, mm. No, I think... Yeah, everything's got connectors, so maybe I won't even have to do soldering. Good. The question is, what is this? Um, okay. This is the schematic, apparently, for this telephone. Um, it's got colours, like black, blue, red, um, they're, they're all sort of various shades of brownie, yeah, just, just brown. So, yeah, they've faded over time, that's not helpful. Let's can tell the ones that are stripy, except I don't know if it's blue, white, or, actually blue, white's the only one, so, oh great, there's other stripy ones. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Oh uh, well, maybe. Oh, I'm an idiot. It's got E and it's got B, E and A. So there's a starting point. Hmm. 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 What is that? Ah, oh, I think that might be this, because there is the earpiece. That must be the mouthpiece then. I suppose I can't think of it being anything else. Okay, now let's try and figure that out. Oh, that wire hooks onto something. That might be where the battery... Ah, maybe these are where the... 
Oh, there's another wire. Maybe these are the... Oh, there's another wire here that's snapped off something. Hmm. It's a real puzzle here. Which, yeah, it's not... Maybe that's what I need to do. I'll straighten this out first. So, yeah, I'll flatten all these wires out a little so they're not all tangled. Well, in an attempt to better figure out what I'm doing, I got a damp cloth and started giving the, some uh, just a light sort of rub to clean off the dirt, and it's actually helping a bit. I can see that's red, a dark colour, and yellow. Again, the lighting's not particularly good here either, so that's not going to help. But, yeah, that might help. So now time to carefully but firmly give these a rub to clean all the dirt off, and maybe then I'll be able to decipher this. Fun, eh? Just thought I'd mention a quick correction. I think that's the bell. Because there's nothing else. So yeah, actually, that's the bell. I think. I don't know. I can't think what else it is. Which means that you've got the receiver. And it means extra receiver is in... Because I know they used to put them... Yeah, I think they would just wire them together. The mouthpiece and earpiece. Hmm. So I think that might... What's that then? Anyway, if we go over to here, my schematic is... Yeah, my one's schematic's a little different. There's that... Yeah, I'm guessing that's the bell then. There's... Oh, no, that, that's... Yeah, it's... They do wire them separately then, because there's the mouthpiece, there's the earpiece. Oh, no, 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 earpiece, mouthpiece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah, trans that's transmitter, I think they call it sometimes. So yeah, that's the mouthpiece, and then that must be the earpiece, that little flat thing. Okay. The problem is, it's, it's drawn in a different order and doesn't have E. I think it's the same thing, though. Yeah, it is. That's the same thing, that the bells are in the same place, and I think everything is in the same place. That means that the, that's the receiver hook. Ah! I've got it. I think that... Yep, that thing there... is the uh, mouthpiece on this schematic. So, I figured something out. I figured one more thing out. E is marked up here. So I'm gonna have to... I think this is the better diagram. That's the schematic, but this is the whole wiring thing, and it is more helpful, so I'll probably try and work off that. It's just a shame that I don't have a more quality printout, but there's not that much missing. Well, it turns out the colours are not much help at all. They've all faded so much that a lot of them are not very recognisable and sort of look the same. However, I've just been through here, yeah, going through it all with a multimeter, comparing it to the schematic and where it was damaged using this fuzzy printout to figure out where the lines went. And, uh, I think I've figured out them all. I don't know if I've got them right. I think I have, because I checked it all. Yeah, I was very careful to make sure I got them all right, but who knows. Because again, some of the colours don't seem to match, although again, it could be that they've just faded so much. But, yeah, there you go. It took a while, but I've labelled every wire here as to where it should go. Now I need to get this tangled mess into here. So I'm going to have to find the photos where I got this photo to see exactly where things go. Because I know that a few points are labelled, like A, B and E. I think look, a, B and A are stamped in there, not sure if it's visible. And I think E probably is too, but everything else I'm sort of going to have to figure out using photos, I think. I still have to figure out what screw does what. So it's, it's a big puzzle with no instructions. Not, and yeah, this the generator thingy. That's gonna yeah, little dynamo. That's gonna I'm gonna I want I want to service it first because it's a bit crusty and all that. It it, it works now. It was all it was, I remember it being stiffer, but it's it turns quite well. But I just want to give it an oil or a grease just to clean it up. It's been sitting around for a century. I'm going to have to, again, look into to try and figure out what all these parts are, because, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to get the bells to stay in the spots, and how to, and what, yeah, again, what screw goes where. There's so many different screws. So I have to find more photos. 
Oh, and this thing, this little weird thing that the other telephone doesn't have, is a little is the cover for the uh, bell ringer, which is interesting. But yeah, <laughs> the the tangled mess is now an a labelled tangled mess. The funny thing is, I labelled all these sort of they made all these tape labels with numbers on them, so that I could yeah, stick them on for what wires went where. But I ended up just using the names from the schematic because everything, just about everything's got its own. Yeah, there's letters or it says to whatever it's going to, and so I sort of just wrote that on them. So uh, these were all pointless. Okay, well I've been going through everything, and uh, I think I might be missing at least one piece: the screw that holds this together. There's a screw there. Well, I think a screw and a washer. Is supposed to be there to close it up. I think I'm missing that because I can't find it in here. I can't find a screw that fits the metal tab there. So, oh well, that's not too bad. I suppose I can go to the shops and see if I can get a screw that has the right thread. Yeah, but otherwise I've been trying to figure out what is for what because <laughs> nothing's labelled or anything. And yeah, I didn't disassemble it, so I don't know what what, what don't, I don't I can't remember what went where. So I had to look at some pictures online, and I figured out what these things are. I thought they were they might have been rubber, but no, they're they're metal. You can't really hear it. They're metal, and they're actually I suppose sort of cable glands or something, because they just press in. Because I was wondering what this hole was for. I'm guessing this is for the wire. Well, for the wire yeah, for the telephone line to come in, and these just sort of press in. And I have no hope of ever getting that out now. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I looked in pictures and that's what that was. And then the other one just goes on the other side. This is where the telephone, uh, where the earpiece, I think it's called the earpiece or the receiver. I think they call it a receiver. First, I'm going to make sure these fit in it. It would be, oh, don't tell me they don't. Okay, they do. Good. Yep, those fit in there. Oh, I forgot the tail, which gets tied on. Oh, and I was wondering why it had these, what looked to me like little picture hook things. These get screwed on the inside, you get on the inside, and you tie the wires to it to keep them in place. So, yeah, I'm, I'm slowly figuring out what each part does. Anyway, that's been pulled through now. Now I can feed that through the hole in the case. Maybe this is a bit premature, but I just want to get something done. Even if it's going to make my life a lot harder. There, now that that's in, it's probably going to be a nuisance, but at least I know where it goes. And I probably can get it out right. <laughs> Hope. Oh well. Anyway, that's one thing. There's still all of this. Oh, and another, actually, another thing I can do. So we've got the bell ringer, and I figured out that the these little stems, I had them on the wrong way round. I thought the bell went on the short end, but no, it goes on the long end. And these little stems fit on here, and you attach them this way because this frame supports the, the the bells so yeah you attach this and then once it's in the case you can put the bells on so that's good and i even had to go to the pictures because i've got two different sorts of uh, nuts to hold them on and i think i figured out which ones are the ones to use the la slightly larger ones and they and if you look there oh don't tell me it hasn't focused this whole time but you can see there's a they're not round, the holes aren't round, they've got a flat spot and they lock in. It's probably so they don't shake loose because again, they're bells. And the last thing you want is the bell just over time unscrewing and just falling off. Okay, see? So you just screw them on like that. Yeah, because, oh yeah, you can see, oh no, I flipped this one around the correct way. And yeah, you've got these, the pretty nuts. Uh, what are they called? Cap nuts or something, because they don't go right through. Those are the ones that uh, hold that hold the bells on. 
But I think there's supposed to be another nut behind to hold them in place. Although, wait a minute, don't tell me that's. Oh no, they are the same length. Good. <laughs> but no, I think you're supposed to put this. Although it didn't really seem to thread on nicely. Okay, that is quite stiff. So I'm not so sure about that, but I can't think where else this is supposed to go. So you have this, and it holds the bell in place. Because otherwise, because you've got so much threaded area, the bells will just be pressed straight against the timber. So yeah. I'm slowly figuring this out. It's like a pu it's a puzzle. It's actually quite fun. Well, confusing, but fun. Well, now the current confusion is where on earth did I put the other nut? Two of each. I thought I had two of each. Oh, don't tell me there's another thing missing. I'm sure there were two of each one. Here we go again. Alright, I just had them in a different spot here. I put them in. Maybe that was originally the correct spot. Oh well, I found it, so no need to panic. I should get a different coloured tray than one that's almost exactly the colour of slightly rusted black painted components, eh? <laughs> oh well. So yeah, that just means that potentially, unless I just can't recognise it, but I've tried all the metal thread screws and none of them seem to fit on that case locking thing. So I think I'm just going to have to find something that fit yeah, have to go to a, go try and buy a screw that fits which oh well yeah and probably a, i think a washer as well and although the problem is i've, I've looked up pictures of them but they're, they're, everything's slightly different they're all slightly different because again these phones got modified because again this one that's got a more modern uh sort of transmitter it's called the transmitter i think but it's got a more modern one than the rest of the telephone, which is all because it's, you can see it's it's all black, whereas everything else is in brass. This would have gone would normally be on one that had all the rest in black and was a more modern design. So these things all got modernized at different points and modified when if something broke. So I'm guessing the old one broke or something. So they're all slightly different. And I'm just realising that, yeah, I am missing another piece. <sighs> I'm missing the uh, plate that goes over here. No. Oh. That goes over the where the sort of hook or cradle or whatever you want to call it goes. That's annoying. Well, uh, although... Hmm. Not that much of a problem, but yeah, I'm missing it because the other one has it. Oh. The other one here has it. You can see it right there. This one doesn't because it's not in the parts, so... Then again, yeah, I got it for five bucks, so... Yeah, again, I've got a second one, so I'm thinking, oh yeah, I can just go and check that one. But that one's completely different. It's actually got, I think someone's actually repaired it with just bolts because the threaded areas just go all the way. And yeah, it's just. This is just a puzzle, so I'm just gonna keep trying to figure things out. Before I install the bells and the ringer, I thought now's probably a good time to use the nail polish to insulate the wire while I still can get to it. She first probably should give it a good shake. Handy that this one happened to be the right colour. Well, red. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it without making a huge mess. But yeah, hmm, it's a little sticky. Sort of like enamelling the wire. But yeah. But yeah, I, I don't wear no nail polish. I think it's, it's so silly, it's such a waste of time. You paint it and then it just gets chipped anyway and you have to redo it and all that. <laughs> so yeah, totally do not wear it at all. It just, I happen to have this lying about, uh oh, don't get it all over that. But yeah, I just happen to have this bottle lying about because someone else didn't want it and I thought, may as well use it, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, 
So there we go. You saw nothing. And then the bells, and it turns out they fit on pretty much perfectly, but it requires two nuts. Put one on, like that, and then you put the more decorative one on, like that. Bit weird, but oh well, it's okay. but it works. And who, who, who am I to question what works? Well, that one's a bit tight, but I'll get it on. These massive ones are the ones that go. Because they're these, oh, <laughs> perfect. These ones are too short. They just don't fit properly. So I have to use you know, these ones and they can go you know, right in. As you can see, they're very rusty looking. So I'm going to use this stuff, the gun blue cream, and see if that actually works with this. That's looking pretty good. So I've got the gun blue cream here. Stuff's apparently very toxic and will burn your skin and all that. You know, it causes severe burns. Lovely. So, <laughs> uh, I'm only going to apply a very, yeah, I'm going to use this cloth following the directions to apply a little to the heads of the screws and we'll see what it does. So, well, oh, don't tell me it's. Oh, that's wonderful. Some of it just went on the floor. This stuff may be completely expired, it is just crumbling. Oh no, that's still. Oh well, let's try rubbing some of this. Have you all gloves? Well, a glove. Let's try rubbing this onto the metal. Okay, um, I think it's already doing something. Oh my goodness, that was quick. It's already just gone dark. Just instantly. Maybe that's just because this cream's... Oh, no. I don't know, was that because there's... I, I, I thought I got rid of the rust with the steel wool. Maybe not enough. Anyway, there we go. And uh, rub a bit more. Maybe this is way too much cream. Actually, this is almost certainly way too much. Uh-oh. No, ah, don't flick it into your face, you idiot. Anyway... That is... Yep, that, that looks like it's blowing it. I'm going to wash this into a bucket because I don't know how dangerous this stuff is to the... <laughs> yeah, considering how dangerous it is, I'm not sure I want to put it down the sink. It's just to neutralise in water. Let's see what happened. And then dry with a soft cloth. I'm not sure I got all of it out of the thing. I'll scrape that out with a screwdriver in a minute. But let's see. You know, I think I want more. Well, there we go. Looks very good. And it worked really quickly, which I suppose is not so surprising considering the scary warnings all over it. That said, it's not much better. It's not much scarier than uh, that hand wash. Actually, it's got the same warnings about avoiding contact with eyes and skin. So, <laughs> for some unknown reason, this thing, apparently, according to the safety, according to the sort of yeah, avoid contact with skin and eyes it's just the same as hand as the, the hand wash we have <laughs> this is certainly the much more scary one I must say although again it's just a pretty blue paste which 
Maybe that's part of the scary thing. It looks so beautiful and edible. Come on. Yum, yum, yum. With the screws nicely blued, the transmitter piece can now be fitted. That's so weird they call it a transmitter. I would have called it the mouthpiece. I think that's what they'd call it later on. Anyway. Quite simple, you just put the screws in, except these ones are for some reason really long, but these are the ones that fit. Weird, but, oh. And something you might want to think of first is to thread the cables through the hole because it is a lot easier to do it before you've screwed the thing on. Actually, it's impossible to do afterwards. So, do that first. And then screw this on. There we go, line it up. There we go. And then it's just a boring bit of me. Tightening screws. Now I am very glad he gave me the bluing cream because that looks beautiful. Rather than the hideous rusty screws, we've now got these beautiful dark screws there. Looks magnificent. So yeah, that's sort of there, that's the front of the phone done. Now the internals have to be sorted out. So while I wait for the soldering iron to warm up so I can solder, I think there's only one or two connections that need to be resoldered because they've snapped. I'm going to come on. Yeah, two connections. I'm going to uh, use some steel wool to clean up these rusty screws, the little flathead, little slotted screws. Always mix it up. It's flathead screwdriver, slotted screw. Camera will eventually focus. Uh, yeah, you can see rather rusty heads. I'm just going to clean them up a bit with this, with some steel wool, so they look a bit nicer, a bit more presentable. Okay, now that the screws have all been shined up, it's time to hook this wire onto, well, the hook. I'm getting all this dust off. Anyway, this one goes to the hook. I'm just going to tear this off because this is going to make work a lot harder. There we go. Oh, the, cord, the uh, cloth is fraying. So I'll just sort of wrap it around. I don't know what I'll do about that. More nail polish? But, uh,. I'm just, that doesn't really matter, there's multiple layers of insulation, this is just the one that gives it a colour. Anyway, you can see there's a place where it's snapped off, I'm just going to solder it back on. Unfortunately, that is quite tight between these other two wires, so that will be quite fun. Try and loop it, maybe I'll go, I'll go the opposite way to the other wires, because I feel like going the other way, being different. No, it's because it looks like it's easier to hook it on that way. I can push it on. There we go. There we go. I apologise if you can't. Oh, no, it looks like you might be able to see what I'm doing. Not how. Not sure how well. At least it's got cloth insulation, which won't mind the heat as much. And I don't think I'll tin the iron. Something you should always do. I found this great instructional film about soldering that hopefully I'll eventually properly learn from. But yeah, just tin it and see if I can get it to stick. No, you don't need any more solder. Good, perfect. Okay. Never mind, we definitely need more solder. That's not going to stay very long. Should probably be wrapped around a bit better. But I guess, guess you forgot pliers. Actually, you can't wrap it around because of the genius design where these are so close together that trying to wrap it around probably get stuck on one of the other wires. Oh, no, 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 never mind. I'm still complaining about designs before I uh, 
figure out that it's just oh, it me who's the problem, not the design. Yep, that looks good. Okay, that's done. I've finally done a good solar joint. <laughs> and now there's one more here. At least as far as I know, this is supposed to be attached here. If it isn't, tell me. I'll probably figure out when this thing doesn't work, except I won't be testing it. Because <laughs> I don't have a way to test it, but there we go. Um, what a big blob of solder. They must solder like I do. <laughs> I should just use pliers instead of uh, subjecting my fingers to this. There are many things I should do. But don't. There we go, melt the blob a bit. And then, oh wow that is hot. <laughs> Duh. Stick. Yeah that is not a good joint. I think there's a second insulation, a third insulation on these wires. You've got the two layers of cloth, and it seems to be this black sort of resiny stuff or something. I don't know, let's see if I can... Let's see, is it... Let's see if it melts off. Then it's a sort of resin. It's just the problem is it's very hard to notice where it is, because it's... The wires are a bit dark, and this room is not the not got the best illumination. There we go. Very messy job, but I think it'll do. And of course, I then just completely undid it because I'm not happy enough with it. That's hot. You know what? I'm going to do this properly. Well, I've decided to do it properly, and uh, I sort of forgot to start filming. Anyway, I've got the scrap of wire off, if you can see it on the iron right now. So that means this is definitely where this wire was attached. And uh, let's see if I can find a way, if I can find a spot to attach it to. It looks like these may just be stuck on, because this wire just seems... Uh, no, oh, they're tied on. Okay. Um... Uh, Let's see how I can do this. I was trying to tin it before. Oh, that's a bit much. <laughs> I really need to get some sort of solder sucker so that I can, I don't know, actually get rid of when there's too much solder. Like there's a huge blob of solder on this terminal. Yep, that's hot, I keep forgetting. <laughs> But I've only got pliers here. So. I, don't, I don't keep forgetting, I just sort of keep going, but it can't be that hot. No, it is. So I'm going to try to hold the sound box together with my fingers. That was, that was an interesting idea. But right, we'll solder it, even if I have to do what they did and just put a big blob on. Well, I've managed to make it worse than they did. Which is not surprising, but disappointing. So, of course, I'm going to mess with it until I make it even worse. I need to service this, because it's a little... The, the squeak is this, which will not really be fixed. I might put a drop of oil. I probably won't, though. But it, it's just... I think they're always, they're always a bit stiff, but I want to give it a bit of grease, just clean it up, it's, it looks pretty dirty. Probably pull the magnets off and give it a clean. Also, it's got three terminals here. Oh, actually, it's got four, five, I think. Oh, two. I thought these big ones were terminals, but no. It's just these two that are terminals, fortunately. I don't know which are which, though. Oh well, I'll be figuring it out in a moment. I'll admit I was a little worried when I had identified two terminals on this, and uh, this shows three. This is, well, it's actually more cl sort of clearer on the other plan, but the other plan's not clearer in the sense that it's not actually... You get the idea, the other one's fuzzy, this one's not fuzzy, but I sort of can tell that there's three lines going there. But this one sort of, they're both sort of helpful, but the original one is a bit eaten there, unfortunately. Anyway, 
there's three wires that need to go to the generator. It turns out there's a third thing at the bottom, which it probably won't focus on. There's a third screw down there, which looks like a terminal. I hope it's a terminal. It is now. That's what I think it is, and that's what I'm going to use it as. It seems to correspond. And I'm just going to try it, because this is a, there's a switch here, if you can tell. When I turn the crank, watch what happens. Connection is made. Connection is broken. Very clever. It's got a mechanism here where the crank goes out when you twist it. Very clever. Very, very clever. So I'm going to be servicing that, and uh, oh. we'll see if I can get to it. Well, I'll say we'll see. We won't see much at all. But I'm sure it'll look nice. I thought I'd quickly show the fun bit about this device, since I cannot remain focused at any <laughs> length of time. I'll just have to hold this on so it doesn't move about anymore. But look! It's generating things! Three volts. It's got 12 volts. And so what's that one I'm using? Oh yeah, that one, getting up to that 8 volts. And it's AC. You know what, let's go into AC and see if it... Because that was in DC and that's why it's all bouncy. Oh! Oh, it generates both AC and D. That is interesting. Okay, uh, more than 30. Is this really for real? Uh, that's at, what, 120? Oh yeah, that used the 12 scale out of zero. 50 volts? 60? I don't know if I'm doing this right, but that's pretty impressive, isn't it? 60 volts. Wouldn't it be current? I mean volts. I can do amps. Ah. Only does uh Hmm. Now that I think about it. No, it's in volts, so it should be measuring the volts. We're just gonna cross the whole thing. I'm supposed to be these are all milliamps. Amp. Alright. Uh, let's go three. Why is it so stiff suddenly? Too weird. Oh! Seriously? That is very interesting. Putting it into amps. Oh! Amps conducts it straight through, and I think it's interfering with how this thing works. When you measures what you're supposed to do with amps is you're not supposed to go across it so I was making a circuit between these two and it must be messing with it resisting it well that is quite interesting I wish I had a box full of these actually I think the guy who I bought this off actually had more but I didn't buy them I had more phone parts and things so maybe I'll try and get a whole box of phone parts because I love this actually I love just get some of these get more of these generators because, wow, they're fun. And I can think of quite a few projects. And they look good. They're really nice aesthetically as well. With all the exposed magnets and coil. The coil at the bottom and the beautiful brass crank. I'm almost sad to put it into this unit. I will, because I think it'll be nice. But who knows, I might pull it out again at some point. Because, again, you can easily swap it out because it's got the, the terminals. It's not soldered or anything. So it's very easy to just swap out. So you don't ruin anything. But yeah, I'm, I might try and get more phone parts and see what I can build with these things, because they're really nice. I'm getting so distracted here. Now, removing the magnets. Okay, I got them off. Well, I got one off. They just really jammed on. So I better make sure that the norths are all in the right spot. Uh, the norths are all when the crank 
is this way, the north saw face the front. So that would be upwards when it's mounted in the case. So I need to remember that. And yeah, so they come off and so I can service this properly. They're just really jammed on there. Hmm. Well, here it all is, and everything's looking pretty good. Haven't got it perfect, but I think it's alright. So, hmm. <laughs> now I have to remember how it goes. Oh yeah, I remember now. You gotta oil it in. There we go. This needs to go into the case. So I think I'll put the case down for that. So the wiring loom. Quite quite the thing too, isn't it? Go over there. I'll get the case. Okay. Um I probably won't be able to show this because it's fiddly and annoying but what I just did was I slipped so you know what I will try and show it actually is it going higher no nope. oh yep here we go live camera adjustment well not live but as in I'm recording this
but yeah, what I, what I think I can do is I can slip that. Do there's something I did there, something like this. I slip it in, and then sort of t I turned it so I could. This is why I didn't grease it yet. Pretty ridiculous, isn't it? There we go. But I do manage it there. Completely absurd, but manageable. And I don't think I wrecked the finish either. And then you just, uh, Hook it in. It's got some screws that it slots onto, which then need to be tightened. And yeah, and then you've got your caller thingy. Beautiful thing. Anyway, I'll fix that up. Well, I got it in. Very fiddly job, but I did manage it. Now I have to sort out all these wires. I think the first thing to do is to uh, put this thing in. Oh, I hope that wasn't important. Receiver. Okay, oh, that's the one I did a terrible job of soldering. Anyway, the first thing to do is to attach uh, the, the hook thing on. And I probably won't film all of this because it is just going to be so fiddly to try and do that. Okay, I've been going through this tangled mess of wire and I think I'm figuring out how it goes. So I'm going to screw some of the things down so that they don't move and hopefully this will work. Yeah, I think I've figured out some of them because you've got... Yeah. Oh. Anyway, the transmitter and bell are pretty obvious, I think. <laughs> and I've got, I've got a photo that I'm sort of working off. Oh, I have to be careful. The tape is yanking off the insulation. So much for my genius idea. There we go, that's better to pull it off from the uh, the metal. Damn it. It snapped the wire. The tape was so strong. Oh well, warm up the stupid iron. It always happens whenever you think you're you're getting close. Something like this happens, and then you realise that no, you're not close at all because Ugh, stupid tape. Well, I finally got it to stick. Not a very neat soldering job, but it's what I could do because the wire just wouldn't stick. I sanded it all to clean it up, get that black insulation off, and it just it just wouldn't work. <sighs> Why does it look so horribly wrong? Okay, now I have to connect all the other terminals. Yeah, you can see they're, they're fitted now. And I've got plenty of others over here to connect up. So I'm just going to sort of get a move on with that, just connecting these on. Now with the labels removed, I believe this will fit sort of here. Yeah, it goes in here. Oh, I've got the battery leads. Now the fun thing about the battery leads is that they actually have to go through some very fine holes that are down here. You probably can't see it. There's a fine hole on either side and I have to thread them through there. So I think I'm going to do that while I still have some access. Some access. I'm not actually, I don't have any access because I've got the Ah, oh, great. I'm not pulling that out again. It's so annoying, though. I don't know how it doesn't get caught in the uh, wheel. Yeah, that is just a terrible design. Does it even fit through it? It does, but the insulation doesn't seem to. Oh, no. Oh, 
how on earth am I going to manage this? Not on camera is the answer. It was actually surprisingly easy to get the battery, ter battery to the terminal once I had a torch to see where I could thread it through. Now with the other one, I think I'm, I'm just sorting out the wires, and I think I'm really seeing how this is supposed to go now. It's starting to sort of make sense, maybe. Oh, maybe that's a bit preemptive. Anyway, I'm gonna. There's the the coil. The first thing I get the battery. This battery wire in. Well, I've still got space. And then I'm gonna bolt the coil down and connect the uh, generator and all that. I, I just, again, I need to stop. I can't film because it's so fiddly. But yeah, I need to connect the wires to the generator. Uh, I have to figure out which one was which. Oh uh, yeah, because I didn't. I don't think I've labelled. Oh no, I did. That's battery to generator. Good, because I've got a plan somewhere, and I can figure out where they're supposed to go. Because you've got. Oh. <laughs> Uh, e to the thingy. I prefer the other diagram, which is here. Oh, and Ethan. Yeah, battery. Anyway, I'll wire it up, and then I'll say what I did. Well, I've wired almost you know, most of it up now. It's still a bit of a mess. I will need to sort of. There's. I've got a few things to the. the what do you call it? To pin the wires down. But yeah, most of it's done, just need to screw the coil back into, into place, a few terminals still to go. There's a few more things to connect, again I'm going to do off camera because isn't, it's so hard to show it, it's so tight. And uh, oh it's awful to use now, oh, don't tell me this wire is getting in the way, that would be about right wouldn't it? Oh no there we go. I'll apply some grease once I'm done, just a very tiny touch of it, not much though, because it will get dust to stick and like spray on things. Anyway, you get the idea. A few more things to screw down. I am missing some screws, because I think I mentioned earlier I'm missing the screws for closing up the case. I'm also missing the screws for the outer brass parts here. So I can't put them on, and I'm missing one of the brass pieces, the one that covers the uh, the hook or cradle or whatever. I'm missing the, that piece, which is annoying. But I suppose I could try making it, or maybe I'll find it somewhere. In some, maybe I'll buy some more parts and get one. They're, I think they'll probably all be quite similar. Anyway, I'll finish off wiring it up. Well, it looks like I've uh, actually uh, sort of uh, finished a project. Uh, except for uh, all the bits that I couldn't finish, I suppose. <laughs> so, hmm, that feels a bit squishy when it closes. Like it's uh, squashing something fabric, which worries me. Oh well. It looks pretty. Oh, of course, I've forgotten. There's one more thing I still can install. If I can remember the trick for installing it. Um, Doesn't that look nice? That is just beautiful. This one looks better than the other one, I think. The other one's got the dial that just that detracts from it, and I actually like the black. Uh, I like the I actually like the combination of black and brass. It looks pretty neat. I don't know. I think all brass would be nice too, but yeah, I think the dial detracts from it, and this just looks really elegant. Also, this this case is shinier. Yeah, and it'll look really nice when it's got its brass little cover plate here over the thing. If it even fits. Oh. Oh, actually, I think this is supposed to go this way. So, yeah, it would fit because it goes that way. <laughs> Otherwise, it would just block the bell. So, yeah, that, that would look really nice. 
And I, I think that this is a replacement. Although, I, I don't know, this thing could just be a mismatch set of pieces because th this this thing looks odd with these stripes sort of like it's almost turned or something. It's weird. So, I don't know. And it has got other black parts, so I don't know what's going on. Yeah, the screws and the uh, black uh, thing around the cord. Which is more in keeping with this one, so I don't know if it's just mismatched parts that have been put together. But yeah, it looks really nice, and once I get a screw for that, and a screw for the brass plates, and I'll just, I think I'll just live with that missing, I really don't care. Again, this thing is not going to see much use. If any. So yeah, unfortunately I can't test it, so who knows if I've, I've wired it right or wrong. I'll find out eventually when I attempt my own intercom setup. But for now, I, all I can do is just crank it and see nothing happens. It turns really nicely though. I'm happy I greased that up. Because it just, it, it, it is so much nicer. Just, I love that design, how you pull it and it springs out. That is so clever. But yeah, a second uh, crank telephone. I'm thinking maybe one of the more modern plastic ones, just as an interesting combination. I'll see what happens. I'll see what I find cheap, because I'm not paying heaps for this, because I'm just doing it as a sort of fun thing. And uh, yeah, wire it up and see what happens. Yeah, this one. But it doesn't have to be one that can hold batteries. Uh, unless it can just run on this one's bed. Nah. It has to be one that can run on... I don't know. Anyway, that's something for me to figure out another day. It seems to work. Maybe. Potentially. And it's just a beautiful thing. So it's just nice to have it together, mostly. Again, need to get some brass screws for the little brass bits. Here, here, and here. And need to get a screw to close the case. But other than that, it's a project that's done. And uh, who knows what all these screws were about. Uh, I'm especially concerned about uh, this thing. This thing looks really sort of important or something. And I'm quite concerned. This thing, I, I figure out what this weird, uh, rather lethal looking thing is. It's actually, it goes on the back. There used to be like three or four of them and they're sort of standoffs so it doesn't go right against the wall for some reason. Maybe I think so the cables, because the cables go out the back. When it's connected. Yeah, I'll just show. Might as well. You can actually see the circles and the holes where th yeah three went, and because the cables went in here. That's yeah. You'd have the the phone line coming in, and maybe it was so the phone line didn't get squashed if it was just run up the wall instead of cut into the wall, because if you've got a house with brick walls, it's really hard. And someone's chipped... I don't know, I wonder if that was done to get the cord through or something. I really don't know. And there's something pet, there's something uh, done in crayon or something on this. Can't make it out. Oh well, this has gone on long enough. You've seen the telephone. Yeah, it has heaps of spare screws and also missing some other screws, so... But again, you've seen it, it's beautiful, this is the back, so it's not as beautiful, but still looks cool. Probably shouldn't pick it up by the transmitter. Anyway. It's magnificent. It's magnificent. It's just beautiful. I really like it, and I hope I can find a way to use it. And the other one also works too, really well. But anyway, because that one's got modern electronics, it probably works a lot better than this thing which can't even be used on a modern phone line. You'll fry everything if you try and turn that crank now that's all connected up. Anyway, you get the idea. Oh, and if you're wondering what that is, uh, that's for the extra uh, receiver, because again, that had the extra, has the extra receiver terminals, and that's so you can have a second one. Apparently, the Fre a lot of French telephones have a second one, so that you have a second person listening without, but they can't talk. They'd have to come to here to talk. I don't know why you'd want that. It, well, I suppose you can have, yeah, if, you have, if you've got someone over, maybe you could both be near the mouthpiece. I don't know, apparently a lot of French telephones have that, whereas it was usually, while a lot of telephones in other countries had the ability to do that, to have that added, you don't see it actually added often, if at all. 
yeah. Anyway, just a random thing I just read online. <laughs> so, perfect timing. And I'm going to finish it now, because I've really said everything I need to say. Oh, I wonder if you can see my reflection. Bye. The lengths I go to for bad jokes.